Russian tanks crashed across Ukraine's borders on February 24, 2022, markedly escalating a war that had been confined for years to the eastern part of the country. In the calamity that has followed, many have warned of the increasing risk of nuclear war, some warnings coming directly from the mouth of the man who started the war, whose country also has the world's largest stockpile of nuclear weapons, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin is threatening to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine or in the West if he doesn't get his way in Ukraine. And he's not getting his way in Ukraine. There's no sign that this mobilization of the extra troops is going to do anything, at least in the short term, possibly longer than that, to reverse these quite startling Ukrainian gains that we've seen. We've seen. His military is losing. So will he back down from this threat? It does make you a little bit nervous, but all the analysts and the officials I've spoken to still think it's a remote possibility. If the territorial integrity of our country is threatened, we will without question use all the means at our disposal to protect Russia and our people. This is not a bluff. Russia has an arsenal of several thousand of these low-yield weapons. And we're talking in that case about an explosion about one fifteenth of the size of, a, of the Hiroshima explosion, which, as we know, was enormous and devastated a whole city. They were built with the sort of massed troop formations in mind that were, were imagined for the next world war, for the second world war, when you had lots of troops concentrated in one place. The Ukrainian battlefield is one and a half thousand miles long. So even if you dropped a, a nuclear weapon on one of those front lines, you wouldn't kill that many troops. Meanwhile, you're escalating massively with the West and drawing perhaps the Americans in, which they almost certainly don't want to do. Putin's illegal annexations of four regions of Ukraine has led to speculation that by treating those areas as part of Russia, the Kremlin may be able to say they are defending Russian soil. Russian nuclear doctrine says that if the existence of Russia is threatened, then tactical nuclear weapons can be used in a first strike scenario to protect the integrity of the Russian state. This isn't the first time Russia and the West have started to climb the nuclear escalation ladder. We insist on an equal balance of forces. And given the overwhelming evidence of Soviet violations of international treaties concerning chemical and biological weapons, we also insist that any agreement we sign can and will be verifiable. It reminds me very much of the situation back in 1983. In November of that year, the, the Soviets prepared a, a full nuclear assault upon the West. Reagan in the White House was really turning up the heat on the Soviet Union, economically, militarily, in rearming the United States with a fantastic new generation of stealth weapons, of aircraft, of ships, of missiles. But also in the rhetoric that he was using against the Soviet Union, he called the Soviets an evil empire. He called them at one point in 1983 a terrorist state. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, was led by a man called Yuri Andropov. He'd been the head of the KGB, and he brought a sort of KGB sense of paranoia to his reading of the situation. And that paranoia really grew in Andropov's mind in the year 1983. He didn't understand that Reagan's talk was very much to appeal to his constituency in America. Andropov actually believed that he was seriously threatening the Soviet Union with a preemptive nuclear assault. It's that sense of paranoia we can detect in the Kremlin today. And of course, Putin was a KGB man. Putin's actions are a sign he's struggling, he's not going to scare us, and he doesn't or intimidate us. In its aggressive anti-Russian policy, the West has crossed every line. We hear constant threats against our country and our people. It's not just Putin vaguely threatening the use of nuclear weapons. People like Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov and other allies have called for escalating the conflict. It's terribly dangerous once you start throwing around talk of nuclear weapons. It gives lots of people ideas. It makes some countries that haven't quite got them yet think about whether they should be working harder to get them. It's still extremely unlikely, but it's a little bit more likely than it has been for at least 30 years and perhaps even longer than that.